ladies and gentlemen, this is Luminous coming you guys with a pro Dota commentary. Today I'm bringing you a game between IG versus Panda, and this is going to be game one of a best of three series uh, between the two teams. Now, I don't know if I'm going to cast all three games, but uh, I'm going to take it a game at a time. If these games turn out to be pretty good, pretty exciting, then I'll cast game two and game three if there is a game three. So IG is going to be on Sentinel today. They are picking and banning first, and then Panda on Scourge. Uh, IG... I think they were the number one team, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago when they took SMM. But now it seems to be really kind of sketchy again. Uh, Panda doing really good lately. DK up there as well. LGD up there as well. So we're looking at four top tier Chinese teams that are really nearing each other's uh, level, skill level. And once again, we see a nice stalker ban. Is he is he trending up as well? Um, I I keep I keep saying that he's a panda counter pick, but he might be a little bit more than that. Uh, hopefully, if he's picked in one of these games, we'll get a better glimpse of why he's banned. Uh, traditionally, Chinese seem to be very good generally against tower diving heroes. Uh, but hey, tower diving heroes are being picked more and more. He is a very good chaser, and I've been saying that this this meta game has been evolving into a chasing meta game where after you win a team fight. Uh, the advantage you could kind of cement for yourself is determined by how good your heroes chase. And Nice Doctor, one of the best chasers in the game, given the fact that he has a very reliable slow and he moves basically a max movement speed at night. So maybe that's it. But the bands are going to be a Nice Doctor, a Chris, uh, Chaos Knight, and a Ferion. Me on the other side is going to be a Silibear, a Bat Rider, and a Lycanthrope. So fairly strong pusher slash chasers being banned on both sides. And here we go. IG is going to be picking the panda first and uh, that hero is being first picked very very commonly in the Chinese scene um, he's actually I mean he he'll, it'll be surprising if he's not first picked now a very short synopsis of why panda is worth the first pick at least in the Chinese players eyes as well he blinks in he initiates him with a team fight um, with that panda split it really forced your opponent into a tough position if you choose to fight it he has a lot of disables in the form of like cyclone or boulder toss um, if you choose to run from it well it's kind of difficult to run from all those uh, disables and also again like I said this is a chasing version so if you try to run from a chasing team that is comprised of things like a weaver uh, you know all these other spells it's, it's gonna be difficult so um, he forces you to run but it, you're in a tough position to run in the first place so that's why Panda is a very very strong team fight uh, hero now he it does have his weakness as well given that the fact his uh, mana pool is fairly low and of, of course his cooldown his primal split is very high as well uh, so that might be an issue but still the Chinese players think he's first pick worthy so they pick him up I me mean, on the other side here we're gonna see Invoker and Crystal Maiden good to see Invoker once again I can't believe I'm saying that because he he was just picked and banned in every single game two or three months ago. But lately, he actually haven't been uh, getting as much love. Uh, but now we're seeing him in Chinese games again. And we have some IG-oriented heroes. Yeah, here we go. We're going to see Chuan on that Windrunner. And uh, be ready for some sick Shaco shot. And also, we're going to see YYF on Gondar. And this hero, by the way, is like not, not picked at all by any team. Uh, as a stable pick, but IG is, uh, you know, using him very stably, and teams are re respecting banning Gondar, <laughs> believe it or not. So we're going to see Gondar being played again, maybe in a solo mid position, because that's how I've seen um, YWF mostly play the Gondar, but uh, he might be surprising us um, a little bit as well. Now let me tell you about a... Uh, uh, Gondar pick as we see a slaughter ban which is a fairly decent ban because uh, he is a very strong chaser His uh, minus armor is very good against strength heroes and also that uh, amplified damage of course will reveal Gondar So it's uh, good to get rid of it, but uh, predominantly he's a very tanky chaser And that's why they don't want to play against that. But yeah, let's talk about the Gondar for a little bit now most Gondars uh, In the Chinese metagame he he's played as a farm you farm a battle fear with him You farm a BKB with him and trying to carry with him uh, but not YYF Skandar. He, he he plays as a ganker, as a true roamer ganker. And that's always good to see. So we'll have to see whether he's going to be doing that again this game. And uh, he has very valid ganking targets. Crystal Maiden will be a very easy target. Chris, uh, the, the Shaker will be easy target. Invoker, if he gets behind in terms of uh, levels and items, he will be easy ganking target as well. So Gondar will have a lot of praise to find. And we're going to see a Dragonite being picked up here. 
Dragonite so far very good against all three heroes on the Scourge team because well he is very very tanky. It's difficult to bring him down without amp without amplified damage, a high amount of minus armor. It's very difficult to bring him down in through the spell damage because well chances are he's gonna get a hood as well. So we see the uh, Scourge is gonna pick up an ancient apparition which is gonna give them very very strong laning. Uh, we might see some sort of trialing of AA. CM and Shaker, that's a very dangerous trialing. We might see a little bit of a dueling, something like a CM Weaver. Uh, ooh, ooh, gotta slow down with these because we're gonna see a Destroyer. So Destroyer is gonna claim that solo lane most likely. We might see some sub, some type like Invoker CM or a uh, or Invoker Shaker, and then we have a dueling of a. Sh AA CM or A Shaker, but we might see a tri lane. So a very very versatile laning because Crystal Maiden and Shaker can go into those lanes very comfortably. And let's see how the lanes can develop. We're gonna see Destroyer go mid as expected. Invoker is going top. So yeah, we're gonna see a tri lane bot most likely. Ring of Protection is purchased on the Ancient Apparition, so he's going to be the farmer in the tri lane, and then he's going to be upgrading it to Basilius, and that will give them the potential to push if they want to do so, or just for that passive mana regeneration, that's going to be nice. Uh, meanwhile, on the Sentinel here, we're going to see Gondar going to stop solo, or maybe we're going to see Gondar Lich in the mid, that's a possibility. Gond uh, Lich DK on the mid is going to be not bad, so yeah, it's going to be Lich DK mid, we're going to see Chuan on the support Windrunner, which by the way, support Windrunner from Chuan is like a carry Windrunner, because he get so many kills anyways and so many good shackle shots so DK is gonna come around and get a little bit of warding uh, done and they did give him the ward because well he's the tankier of most heroes in the game so he could safely walk ahead and drop off wards me on the other side these guys offensively trying to put down ward as well wards handed to where does the wards crystal maiden but I'm sure Chuan has sentry wars ready yes he does so if the camp is blocked he will counter immediately and do some pulls it's a very, very uh, standard exchange of warding and counter warding, so no big deal. Uh, Gandar is going to be soloing top. He should be able to do it, especially against Invoker, who doesn't have the strongest. I mean, he he's a, he has a very, very good passive laning harassment spell. Uh, of course, the cost given regen. Cold Snap is going to be nice in terms of harassing, but you're not going to kill a Gandar, so he's going to get a little bit of CS, especially with the help of that stout shield. In the mid lane here, seems like IG will have the lane in their favor as well. Lich in the mid lane is just sexy in terms of having that deny of course nova harass and then you basically scare away people with a uh you know threat of a dragon tail looks like dragon tail will be happening he hasn't there's a dragon tail being skilled up just right now and uh he's got to be careful dragon tail is going to be popped right now and how things he's safe because well lich doesn't have the nova but still you can see the physical damage is just enough to bring him down and force him you to salve very quickly crystal maiden responding correctly by saying well looks like my destroyer is going to need a little bit of help in the mid lane so i'm going to come around and do a little bit of assisting because on the bot lane here shaker and extra operation which by the way one of the strongest laning combination there is you drop off the kofi fissure immediately comes in so you can have at least you know two three hundred of nuke damage right at level one and also you have a very very long stun duration as we see a first blood getting uh successfully being picked up here by the crystal maiden crystal maiden what is he skilled his skill uh bite a level one freeze bite or frostbite i think it's called and then uh nova level two so they got the kill on the lich i'm completely uh non-suspecting that but lich before hitting level two did not have his nuke so didn't have that really reliable slow to work with and I got really picked off uh, in conjunction with that a uh, in conjunction with the Astro Imprisonment, that's as well it's called. Of course, he's going to be leveling up his uh, Essence Aura, which is going to help out spamming that Astro Imprisonment, and of course, Crystal Maiden spells as well. Crystal Maiden, by the way, would not be picking many levels of Aura. He's going to pick one at level 3, and chances are he's going to go into uh, Novas or Bite, depending on what need. I think he's going to go Bite this game, to be honest here, because there is a Gondar on the enemy team, and uh, Bite will continue to reveal Invisible Unit as he tries to go to Windwalk. And the reason I say that he's not go going to go into many levels of Aura as well, because, well, we have Ancient operation on our team we have a shaker on the team and chances are these two heroes will be going into uh, arcane boots and when you have mass arcane boots on your team you don't need as many uh, mana regeneration uh, from the crystal maiden so he could get a little bit more offensive spells looks like on the bottom here ferrari playing the panda doing a fairly good job right now uh, Getting a couple of uh, CS's, getting some last hits. Tron uh, sitting out of the EXP range, coming here to do a little bit of harass. But he's got to be fairly careful. Great trap here, and it looks like Windrun might be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to pop off the Windrun and try to run a big circle around, and he's going to be okay. The cooldown of these spells are fairly long, so they can't do too much. And it looks like Panda going on the offensive. Meanwhile, the mid lane here, a little bit more offensive going on as we see Crystal Maiden picks up that Illusion rune. And right now, Destroyer being really offensive here. 
Gotta be somewhat careful. He does have boots of speed, so he should be okay. Meanwhile, here it looks like Lich did a little bit of uh, creep pulling, and he's then gonna Nova creep as well to do a little bit of jungling. This is very odd. This is saying that I want I want to give a lot of my EXP to that DK so I can hit you know six or sixteen. Uh, as soon as possible, but you know, Lich is one of the best heroes in the lane, so maybe he should stay in the lane. He's still uh, dark ritualing like crazy, so no big deal in that regard. But he's getting a lot of his creep denied, and these guys are doing a lot of harass. There's a bite going on. Uh, Nova, nope, just just some passive harass. Me on the top lane here. Let's check out how we're doing here. Level four and a half invoker to a yeah, a little bit behind in terms of exp, and the deny is coming in in favor of the invoker as you expect. Well, because well. He is range, and he does have better uh, lane controlling lane controlling ability. Let's talk about who's playing out. As we see another harass going out on the faith, who's playing a lich, and he's gonna be okay, taking a lot of damage now. He is gonna be running low in terms of tangles, so he should be fairly careful. Zo, of course, is gonna be playing the Dragonite. Ferrari playing his trusted Panda. Chuan on the Windrunner, as you expect, and of course on the top lane, YY of Scandar. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, we're gonna have Yao Bai on the Invoker. Meanwhile, mid lane here, Hao on the Destroyer, doing a lot of harass with that Ancestral Imprisonment. Crystal Maiden being played by Shansheng. In the jungle, we have Shaker being played by 830. And then on the bot lane here, A being played by Mu. Mu generally plays a solo mid heroes, a solo mid position. He generally plays Destroyer as well. So, very interesting to see him playing on the silent here, especially on Ancient Apparition. Maybe he's feeling a little bit more confident uh, playing uh, AA. But looks like we did have a kill on the top lane. I'm sorry, I missed that. It is Crystal Maiden ganking with the haste rune. Did already have a dust, and of course, between dust and bite, did you have a lot of duration in terms of revealing invisible heroes? Of course, Cold Snap was there to drop off a couple of uh, more disables as well, so they were able to bring down Gondar very nicely. And it's gonna be Scourge leading two early kills. Uh, you expect IG to be leading, but no, there's a cold feed and there's a fissure and that's the long duration of stun I'm talking about. Panda, one more hit away, he's gonna salve up just barely. That uh, that fissure a little bit on the wrong side, so they did, weren't able to get the kill. But Panda, very quick salve, is gonna bring uh, bring himself up in terms of healthy amount of HP, but it's gotta be very careful because this is a very spamble mode spell and they could just use it relentlessly on the bot lane. Meanwhile, milling here, a lot of spell being dropped off and they were able to get a kill. A Dragon Tail, Invisible Gondar Gang coming in. Of course, Lich Slow was able to bring him down. And that's the difference between Gondar's play from YYF and many other Gondar players out there. He goes to gank, and uh, that might sound like a duh thing because Gondar is a ganking hero. But uh, a lot of Chinese teams love to play a farming Gondar. It's going to be great to see a deviation from that. But right now, they are still a little behind despite with that successful destroyer gank. Uh, they did lose a Gondar in top lane and they did lose on the Lich in the mid lane. So I feel like Scourge is still in a very good position, especially on this bot lane. Seems to be uh, very well controlled by the Scourge team as well. They have a very deadly killing combo. If this woman is ever out of position, maybe he's doing a little bit of pull or something, they could easily go on the Panda who is at half HP right now. I'm surprised that they're not using a little bit more mana to go on him because they do have the level 1 Crystal Maiden aura to give a little bit of help out. Also, I want to point out that Crystal Maiden is doing a beautiful job in terms of lane controlling, or rune controlling. She's been grabbing every single rune. She grabbed an illusion rune that's gave him a little bit of passive harass in the lane. Of course, she grabbed the haste rune and ganked top with it. And now she's grabbing the uh, regen rune as well. And generally, of course, Lich in the mid lane gives you the benefit of denying and pulling the creep equilibrium close to the tower, but we see Stan Shung fully exploiting that. He's saying, well, since the creep is right here all the time, that means they're going to have a diff more difficult time in terms of grabbing the runes. So let me just get the benefits of all grabbing every single rune and then, you know, go like crazy. We do see a, uh, a Sentry Ward being dropped down here. Maybe they're expecting a ward uphill. Uh, trying to encounter that one. Generally, we do see a lot of Chinese teams love to put these wards on the mid lane, like right here, right here, to see the uphill vision across the hill, which is nice. Uh, and, and Crystal Maiden was expecting that. Unfortunately for her, uh, that was not the case. We're on the bottom here. We do see Gondar in the lane trying to get a gank, and unfortunately, they was they were not able to do so. Maybe, I think he went on the Shaker, but I, he salved up to full HP, I assume. But unfortunately, he was not able to do so. And Gondar he is using a lot of time to gank, but unfortunately, that is going to leave Invoker free farming. He's got the phase boot already finished. He's going to pick up a TP scroll right now. Yep, indeed. And that means he's going to come in with a very highly level of Tornado. And uh, help out with a counter gang. Invoker, one of the best counter ganger there is. So he's completely prepared for that one. Meanwhile, on the mid lane here, DK is still farming it up. Uh, Soul Ring is picked up right now. And uh, he's not going to be too afraid of that Astro Imprisonment spam because the Soul Ring will give you insane mana regeneration. Ah, and that Sentry Ward might be for an anti-Gondar gank as well. Uh, because Gondar, they were ganked just in the mid lane. And it looks like he is going to run around 
I do believe if you pop out here, uh, Sentry Vision will be there. But he's now on the high ground. He's very low on the mana, so he won't have mana for both track and Shuriken Toss. And here we go. They might be coming in right now for the Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden is nuked down. There's a Shuriken Toss. She's very low HP. So she's no restorative, but without a, another nuke, she's going to be fine. Is she going to go back to the base right now or is she going to stay around? Looks like she is. No, it's going to just benefit from the headdress region of the, uh, of the Destroyer, I suppose. Level 5, uh, Crystal Maiden's gonna pick up Nova at 2, Aura at 2, and Bite at 1. Oh, okay. I thought she's not gonna level up that Aura, but I guess that was not the case. She, uh, she did level it up. Run on Panda on the bottom here. It's gonna pick up the Face Boot, and maybe they're gonna go on the offensive. She does have one, uh, enough mana for a Clap and Ultimate as well. And uh, they could make for go. Tron Shackle Shot calling it right now. And it looks like Fissure Block actually blocked the uh, move on the wrong place. But the stun duration was good enough to slow him down. So nicely done. Of course, we're going to be seeing more and more of that beautiful Shackle Shot by Tron. So uh, look forward to that one. Ancient Operation is going to pick up Arcane Boots right now. Yeah, there we go. Now they're going to be spamming like crazy. And Shaker will be nearing to his Arcane Boots as well. So they're going to have a lot of mana man. And this is in between Crystal Maiden Aura, in between uh, Essence uh, Essence Aura from the uh, Destroyer. They get, they're going to be spamming so much, it's not even funny. And it's going to be really helpful for a hero such as Invoker who desperately needs mana all the time. So cool stuff, cool stuff from the... Uh, from the Panda Squad. You know, IG, all they really wanted to do in this stage of the game is to just to farm up and get levels. They are so level dependent. Ghana wants to have, of course, level 16 or level 11 to have higher level of track. Of course, DK needs to have hit level 16 uh, or else it's just, you know, a different kind of hero. Of course, Lich want to hit level 11 for a strong chain for us as well. Panda wants to hit level 16 and women are even, despite being support, she needs level as well. So this kind of passive play is actually very favorable to the IG lineup because they're saying, well, nothing's happening right now. That's fine. We're not getting really ganked and uh, it's going to be up to Scourge that's going to be pulling uh, you know, the ganking because they don't really have as good late game, I feel. Uh, they do have Destroyer which is a very, fairly strong late game but I don't think he could out carry a DK who most likely will be going BKB, I presume, against this Destroyer. And a Gondar who can be going BKB as well. So, and of course, Panda doesn't really care about Destroyer because he could Panda split. So I th I feel like if it goes to really late, IG should have the advantage. Uh, they gotta be fear fearful about that. Lich is invisible, and I do believe they do have the war to see. Uh, the Lich did pick up an Invisor and Crystal Maiden staying around. Uh, she does have a pair of dust, and let's see if she's feeling a little bit psychic. She could do a blind dust here and just screw over this Lich royally. Lich doesn't have the Chain Frost, so he can't be easily brought down without too much of a fight. A little bit of a uh, Kofi plus Fissure tick, and it looks like, yeah, he is still sticked up despite having the Face Boot, and you can see the power of that combo. And uh, Panda. Fairly low HP despite uh, fearing himself a salve. And here we go. Windrunner is going to circle around. He's going to find himself a... No, no. Just kidding. And uh, Crystal Maiden is com coming around here as well. And we're going to see engagement happening fairly soon. Let's see who they're going to go on. Crystal Maiden on the Panda. Panda does have a split. So it's going to be somewhat difficult. There's the... Oh, they don't have a fissure. A Blast comes in right now. And there's a Panda split. Looks like Tron might be going down. All the spell being dropped on him. And Crystal Maiden is going to be forfeited his life. There's a six second Cyclone on the Ancient Apparition. Uh, just to slow him down. But I don't think they're going to go on him anymore. Yeah, Panda's going to go out just fine. But yeah, that, that actually worked out fairly decently for the IG squad. It was a 3v2 engagement. They traded supports, and uh, it looks like Panda did not die. But unfortunately for him, he did use that long cooldown of that Panda split. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but I think they'll take that. Uh, meanwhile, the mid lane here, Destroyer going for that uh, Mecha, which is fairly standard. As we see YYF coming around with another teleport gank, and here we go. And this is exactly what I mean. Right now, they do not suspect at all one more hit is going to do it. Unfortunately, he didn't get a track off. Uh, and it's, it's just so difficult to prepare against that. That's why, like, I mean, how, how do you prepare against that? He just TPs in, invis, and walks up to you and start hitting. And unless you have Sentry Ward in every single lane, which is not really advisable because that's a lot of gold investment, you're going to get your heroes ganked off. And this is, I mean, this is, seems to be very easy. And, like, kind of like, why don't more teams do this? But YYF is just making it work. And not many other teams is making it work. So nicely done. Hopefully we're going to see more Gondor play. Because I feel like he, he does have a lot of potential uh, as a hero. And here we go. Trying to come in right now and get a perfect Shackle shot off. And then make something happen. But it looks like that's not going to be the case. So you see Chuan. He's going to stay back. And uh, uh, the good thing of this lane is that even though, you know, they're not getting too many kills in this lane. They're making Panda to burn a lot of cells. And that's gold investment. 
And nonetheless, meanwhile on the top lane here, uh, with the Gondor not in the lane, Invoker is going to push the lane down, and he's absolutely farmed. Look at his farm, a phase boot and arcane boots finish in 13 minutes, and he's got a tower push down by himself. So yes, that is the benefit of Gondor, you are getting a lot of ganks off, but unfortunately you're going to weaken your top lane severely. Which might not be too big of a deal, because you are going to give your carry a very safe lane to farm. Of course, Sentry Ward is dropped down, to, so they do see the Gondor coming around, but looks like they're going to make a gig die. And here comes uh, Destroy. Destroy going to imprison. There's a Chain Frost being dropped out. Shaker in huge trouble. He's going to get nuked down. Are they going to trade a DK? They need to trade a DK, or else it's not worth that. We do have a Dragon Tail being whipped off. We're, oh, there's oh, where's the Tornado? No Tornado! A tornado's going to miss, and looks like DK is going to be fine. And looks like we do have Panda canceling TP. He realized he doesn't need to be there, but there's a Shaco Shot on the bot lane. There's it's gonna be a clap. There's a clap of one more kill. Goes to IG as well. Perfectly done here by the screw uh, by the Sentinel team. Good move by the Panda canceling TP. Realize that he doesn't need to be there anymore. DK was fine in mid lane. Chain Frost was dropped. They did not expect that at all. Uh, of course, with the Invoker TPing in, you just expect to get the kill. But unfortunately, I think Invoker made a pretty mis big mistake. He wasn't casting uh, the necessary spells uh, to keep a DK in place. And DK was, okay, I'll tank everything up and uh, let my Chain Frost do the work. So that's two kill going in favor of IG. And uh, right now, it's 5-3 to three in favor of IG. They don't have the tower lead. Because uh, Invoker did push down on tower, but I think uh, so far this game is really even. It's fairly, fairly even. So they're going to try to push down on the mid lane, but uh, Destroyer is only level 7. Uh, he's not nearing his mecha yet. Let me check how he's doing on the gold. He's got 400 gold in the bank. Uh, let me see if he has any parts on the courier. Looks like he doesn't, so... Now, not the best farm for a Destroyer friend here, but he's going to tr uh, try to get a little bit farm on the top lane and keep Gondor down. And uh, Gondar, you can see that he's not really going for a DPS kind of item. He's going to go for a Bracer uh, because he, he realized that he's going to be doing quite a bit of initiation with his uh, track and, you know, Janata hit and whatnot. So getting a little bit of extra HP is not bad. And, of course, his strength gain is fairly low. So you're going to need a little bit of extra, extra HP uh, as well. So most likely he's going to go strength threats afterwards. And then he's going to decide maybe SMY wouldn't be bad. Django actually wouldn't be bad on Gondar uh, getting the extra, you know, uh, mobility and... Chinese players love the Django so so much. Uh, you see multiple Django's being purchased all the time. Or he might be going for BKB because that's going to be a fairly decent choice against this drawer. And of course against the new damage of the Scourge lineup. Here we go Scourge trying to set up a gank on the bot lane. I'm pretty sure Panda does have his ultimate on cooldown. Does he have the mana to do so? And he, Well he leveled up right now. Still have 9 charges on the magic wand. So he should be fine. Crystal Maiden drops a very offensive ward. That thing is begging to be countered because they, I think, I'm sure everyone saw it drop down, being dropped down. So... So we have a teleportation going to the second tower. Who is that coming in? No, it was cancelled. What was that about? Tower is going to be destroyed by the uh, bot lane. Let's see if they can pick anyone off. Crystal Maiden is going to be the first one to drop down. She's surrounded by 3 and 4. Uh, there's a nuke. Uh, Nova is going to do the job here. And it looks like the chase is going to continue. Great fissure block. And that's going to do it. No. Shaco Shot says. Nope. I'm going to get one down. And there we go. There's a Dragon Tail. A couple more right clicks. It looks like Shaker is going to go down as well. So a tower for two supports and here comes a chasing and there's a chasing power of that Gondor going to be a track. There's a Janata slow and it looks like they are going to bring him down as well. Look at how easy it is to chase down heroes when you have face boots, when you have track. And that's why I, I feel like Gondor is a very, very good hero for this version, especially the, especially the fact that we chase so very hard. That is not a max power shot. Have you seen that? Maybe that. No, that isn't a max power shot. What am I saying? Is it a max power shot? It doesn't seem like it. You know what? This is Tron, so it won't be surprising at all if he <laughs> decides to max Shaco shot, because uh, he's just so good with a Shaco. But uh, I don't think that's a. Yeah, it is, I. Hmm. It might be a max power shot. I don't play Winner at all, so I'm not really familiar with the Winner. But anyways, anyways. Going back in the top lane here, Destroyer still continue to get the farm up. Uh, they did lose a couple of heroes, and this is the stage of the game they got to be very, very careful about. Yes, uh, we're approaching the stage of the game where the enemy team is starting to get a little bit tanky, where your nukes is not going to do enough damage, but we do have a big gank coming in right now. Where is the Fissure? Yes, there's a Fissure. There's a Kofi as well. A Blast comes in, and they want him dead. Chain Frost is going to be dropped. Lich might be down as well, but that Chain Frost is doing so much damage. Shaco Shot is going to just get for the mini stun, and they, it looks like Gonda should be able to bring him down. Power Shot is going to do the job. Tron gets a kill and they did lose a DK and, and a Lich for it as well but uh, they did pick off a uh, Shaker as a constellation prize definitely what, not what you want but 
hey, you can't ask for everything. Of course, another Sentry War being dropped down on the mid lane. So even though that the Gondar isn't getting as many ganks successfully because these Sentry Wars are being dropped down, He's at the very least forcing this gold investment. Someone's bravely TPing. Gotta be fairly careful. It's Panda, so he does have the split. So he's not too worried about that. Meanwhile, Chuan always poking in for a threat of a Shackle Shot. It looks like this tower is going to get denied. I hope. I hope they have the last... There we go. Fairly easy to deny being committed uh, by the Sentinel team. Man, the top lane here, Mu still, or excuse me, Hao is still farming it up. He does have the mecha finish, and I think he should be either going for 4 staff at this point or a uh, BKB of himself. Uh, let's see if he feels he needs a little bit more a uh, magical immunity or or a, a little bit more positioning. I think against a shackle shot, and also uh, it's hard to say because uh, you know against a DK he does have a lot of physical damage, and of course Panda have a lot of physical damage as well. So maybe the BKB isn't the best choice. Uh, as we see Invisrim being picked up by the Wimrunner, he's very lucky to find that rune, so he's going to be fine. Uh, but then you're also up against a lot of spell damage. Uh, Tron has a bit, you know, uh, the Lich has a bit, and of course uh, the Gondar, you know, don't don't underestimate his uh, spell damage output, he's, he's not too bad. So, you know, it, it's a tough, fo tough choice uh, in the Destroyer's case here. I personally prefer the, uh, prefer the, uh, Four staff in this case, because they give you a little bit more mobility, especially when you're up against such good shackle shot player. Uh, even when one of the teammates gets shackled, you can push him away a little bit. Uh, you could disrupt, so it, it just gives you more mobility to work with. But BKB definitely a, a safer item overall, because if you look at his HP pool, really, really weak. And it looks like we're going to have a gank coming in right now. Uh, Blink Dagger is up at, on the Panda. And he's going to be blinking in right now. And it looks like they're going to use the ultimate on, on him as well. I'm not too sure whether that was needed, but hey. Uh, they, they just use the Panda Ultimate to make sure they get the kill. And uh, now, Blink Dagger, this might be a very standard item, uh, but definitely not the standard thing in Chinese games because, well, Panda, you can see that after one gank, he has out of mana at this point. So, uh, generally, a lot of uh, uh, teams like to get things like a uh, Arcane Boots. Not Arcane Boots, what am I saying? A Django on the Panda to give him the mana. And it looks like Shaker's gonna walk right into three heroes, and uh, he is gonna be going down. The ward, the ward control on Scourge, not uh, not as good as you expect. There's one ward here, and that's it. And the guy on Shaker kind of walked, uh, got really easily picked off. And I kind of kind of could expect why, you know, it's like, oh man, Panda Ultimate is down. Looks like Sentinel team won't be looking for a little bit that that much offensive because well, Panda Ultimate is down, so they don't want to do uh, you know team fights and such. But unfortunately for him, it looks like Force Staff is going to be dropped on Tron, but Tron should be okay. It's going to pop off the wind run immediately before his mana is drained. It's going to be fine. Um, Looks like Scourge can go into the Roche Pit if they really want to do so because, well, Panda Ultimate is down. Panda could go into ganks, but he really can't go into a team fight. And I do believe they have the DPS to bring down uh, the, the uh, Roshan. They have the Cold Snap and the, also the Cold Feet as well. That can leave Roshan disabled for a long duration of time. Let's see if they're going to try that. Um, physical DPS wise, they should be able to do it because these guys right click pretty hard. They are going to give it a temp. And let's see if that's going to be. Yep, there's a cold snap, there's a cold feed, this uh, Roshan is basically going to get chainstun and a free spot as well. Not the best chainstun uh, on a non-moving hero like Roche. Uh, but they are going to drop a lot of points of mana for it right now. And also, they're going to use uh, orb pits on him as well to do as much damage as possible. You can see Roche's HP dropping so very quickly. And uh, who's going to pick up the Aegis is the question. Are they going to give it to the carry destroyer who desperately needs survivability? Or are they going to give it to Invoker who, you know, wants to stay in the team fight as long as possible? Here we go. There's the EMP Tornado. Just a Tornado being dropped right now. Great Fraser block. And there's the IA Blast going to be premium right now. Gondar is going to go down for sure. Looks like this team fight is going to be won by the uh, Scourge lineup if they don't take all these Chain Frost damage. Yeah, they're going to chase everyone away. Actually, they're going to go on the high ground. And how's going to be a little bit trouble? Self-disrupt. You need a self-disrupt. He's going to disrupt the enemy team because he has the Aegis. So no big deal here. Panda goes down before he does anything and it looks like DK gonna be in huge trouble great shackle shot on two hero and it looks like he might be okay there's a tornado to pick him up in the air he's very low couple more physical hits gonna do it there's an ultimate being dropped by destroyer gonna bring him down Tron goes down looks like we have great oh did he make it out no he didn't disrupt is gonna bring the lich on the wrong side of Fisher but looks like Chainson is gonna do it and IG just drops a huge team fight great choice by the scourge squad to really fo force that Roshan fight because they're saying, well, if you don't fight us now, we're going to get the free Aegis. Not only did they get the free Aegis, because they had such high DPS to bring him down so very quickly. Also, they were forced to, they were able to force a team fight 
I'm not too sure what a panda had this ultimate. Maybe he did, but the reason he might not have been able to cast it off is because probably of the EMP that drained a big deal of his mana. And when you go blink dagger first on panda, you won't have. You can see that one EMP right now. I don't think his EMP is max. Let me check out how Invoker is doing in terms of his levels. Um, yeah, EMP is should be maxed by now. So that's 400 mana being drained, and that's definitely not enough uh, mana to use his ultimate afterwards. So maybe that was the case. He w either case he was not able to drop off his ultimate, and the team fight just went so ridiculously easy. Of course, those fissure traps are just absolutely nice, man. At first, it blocked off, it completely sectioned off the Gondar, so he died immediately. And then another huge block was right here, uh, an another block over here. So. It was really nicely done. It looks like the team fight is going to be happening in mid lane here. Shanshan does will detect people again with that Sentry Ward. He's so prepared with Sentry Ward. And it looks like he is going to go down, unfortunately for him. And it looks like the track bonus is going to be passed around. Everyone, and it looks like, are they going to try for this tower? Um, they might have a fairly difficult time. AA Blast is going to come in right now to lower everyone's HP. And it looks like Fissure is going to be setting everyone up. And it looks like Gondor is going to go down. EMP Tornado is going to ensure that no, Gondor is still alive right now. Panda is going to use the ultimate. Yes, while I did go down. And they're going to give chase to the Shaker. Shaker is going to go down as well. well. We have support coming in right now. Shaker is dead. But it looks like all, everyone's such low HP. Lich is very low as well. He is Cyclone in the air. He does, should have four staff up very soon. It looks like Mu did get a kill by Backstab. Panda duration runs out with his ultimate four staff. It's gonna be Nova dropped on everyone, and it looks like they are gonna chase down the panda. Panda trying to blink out Shackle Shot on two hero. You can count on Tron, but unfortunately, that looks like he is frozen. He, his mana is strained. Panda is gonna go down as well, and they are gonna keep on chasing because Scourge not too bad chasing themselves. They do have the disrupt, they do have so many spells. And it looks like Uzo went for a really bold move trying to kill the Crystal Maiden. He was so close, but Tron picks up a dominating streak before TP's out. What a play by Tron. Come on, man. I mean, this is why he's probably the best winner player in the world. Damn. Uh, but looks like they're still trying to find Tron. Tron just TP'd out and said low. But great move by both teams. And looks like a Panda is going to claim that team fight once again. Really, the AA Blast plus the Fissure combination just dropped everyone low. And here you can see the power, uh, uh, the, the weakness of Gondar. You can see that despite going for a Ancient Django of Endurance, he's still so frail in terms of HP. A single Fissure, a single AA Blast just brings him half HP. And after a couple of nukes, he's just going to die to Shatter. So he, he's in a little bit of trouble uh, if he, if, you know, he's got to be very, very careful. Looks like we are not seeing that very kind of traditional... Uh, 80 minutes of farm and you know two minutes of team fight game. We're having somewhat of a high paced high action game great team fight so far overall Hopefully you guys are enjoying the game so far. It is IG still leading by two kills But I think that the momentum has shift back to Panda IG has been leading you know in those early game engagement fairly nice ganks overall being led by YYF and Ferrari But looks like the team fight believe it or not is not in the team that has a Panda the hero not Panda the team I hope that makes sense. Uh, generally, you expect the team that has the Panda the Hero to be leading. But uh, Panda without Panda, doing quite fine without the Panda. Okay, that's that's getting a little bit old. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Zo free farming on the bot lane. Uh, he is level 13 right now, desperately, of course, and needs his level 16. He's actually not getting the best farm, to be completely honest here. He's got the Vanguard, he's got Soul Ring. He would like to finish Pipe as soon as possible, because that Pipe so very good against the Scourge squad. And Scourge, got to be fairly careful as well. Despite the fact that they're winning right now, it won't last forever. They are a very magically dependent team, so once a Pipe is finished, they are going to be in big trouble. And once the BKBs are up, ooh. I don't even want to think at that point what's going to happen. So they really have to set the tone of the game right now and, and call the shots. Maybe bring off a couple more exterior towers, tier 2 towers. A very good job in terms of keeping up their own towers. They're leading by flat out 3 towers. And uh, that is really uh, contributing to the fact that they're leading by so much. So looks like we're going to have a top tower push coming up here. Let's see if they can do it. I'm not too sure whether they can. And here we go. The double arcane boots is up uh, as presume. And Crystal Maiden, let's see what is she doing with her build. Um, she's leaving Aura at 2, and of course, choosing to max her other spells as well. It looks like we're going to have a smoke attempt going over here, and Crystal Maiden might be, uh, quote-unquote, scouting it out. And no, it looks like they're going to back off. They're saying, you know what, everyone's missing off the map. Uh, we got to be somewhat careful. And uh, rightfully so, they're going to back off. Let's, sh let's check out how everyone's doing in terms of vision. Uh, Scourge, what do they see? They see nothing. Uh, the warding on both sides has been somewhat lackluster, and... 
I mean, I kind of expect it because both team support, they're just being paid off so many times. Uh, they're getting things like uh, dust, they're getting things like uh, smoke. And uh, this Crystal Maiden, he's, she's been getting so many sentry wards as well. So uh, you don't expect her to keep the entire uh, map warded like you know most teams would. So really commendable job on both team support uh, despite there's not many wards up so far. Now let's talk about what both team needs to do at this point, right? Let's check out the let's check out the Sentinel. Of course, again, we really want the uh, Sentinel team to keep on farming. They just gotta stay on defensive and keep on farming. DK needs level 16, of course. Panda needs level 16. Uh, Panda's pretty much done with this item. He would like to get another Vlad uh, to kind of buff out, you know, the armor, the mana regeneration, the plus damage, life steal. You know, everything is nice, but he's pretty much done in this case. Uh, Gonda, of course, is gonna be going strange threats, maybe BKB after. But right now, the key thing for the Sentinel is levels. Uh, uh, level 16, uh, level 11 on the Lich, yeah, he's halfway to level 11 as well, so he needs level as well. And uh, they just need a turtle, and uh, IG is right now seemingly doing a really good job on that. Meon Scourge at this point here, they have the levels, they have their level 11 spells, that's kind of what they need. Invoker is fairly level as well, Destroyer, uh, enough, he's gone, he's gone for the 4 step. What they need to do right now is force team fights. Catch Panda Ultimate, catch him without cooldown, catch him without mana, and force team fights, take a couple of towers, because they are playing on a clock. So uh, one team wants a turtle, other team forced to go on the offensive, um, and let's see how the, how you know how the game's gonna develop. Let's see how 8:30 is doing on his gold. If he has, in, yeah, he's really close to blink dagger. Maybe you give him a minute or two of free farm and get that blink dagger up, because that blink dagger is gonna give him a huge benefit in team fight. So let's see if that's gonna be the case. They're gonna give him jungle creeps right now, and uh, he should be fairly close to uh, to his blink. Hopefully he's going to pick it up fairly soon. It looks like Sentinel going on offensive. Do they need to do this? I don't think so. Maybe they're like, you know what? We're so desperate for a little bit of map vision because they don't have any extra tower right now. So maybe they could. They feel like they force it down, especially with the Panda Ultimate. It looks like there is going to be a fissure. Is there going to be a glyph? No. Scourge is going to give that one up. Yes, as well. Destroyer is free farming on the bot lane. They do have a couple of Sentry Wars. There's an Observer Ward here as well. And that's going to give them kind of a little bit of coverage. It looks like we're going to be trading a TP scroll from both carry heroes. And they're going to back off. And Destroyer continue to free farm on the top lane. And yes, Destroyer, I mean, he... By far, he is probably the best TP hero, DPS hero in the very late stage game because all his orb hits will go through pure... Uh, they do pure damage, so it goes through armor and, of, of course, magic resistance as well. And his ultimate does a huge amount of damage in AoE, so he's often regarded as the highest DP heroes in the game. So after you pick up a BKB on him, he is going to pack a huge punch. Uh, but, you know, you constantly have to worry about his HP level because he's just so, so weak in terms of HP. You have to see, though. We will have to see. Crystal Maiden, fairly good item progression. Level 10 here. Boots earn. Uh, Ancient Aberration, of course. Four Staff, uh, Arcane Boots. Who has a mecha is the question here. Invoker has a mecha? No one has a mecha, I think. Yeah, no one has a mecha. I think Skirsh should try their best to work on a mecha. Looks like Ancient Operation is working on a hood instead. It has a ring of health. So I'm not too sure whether that's... Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Of course, he has a mecha here. And what am I saying? i saying that Destroyer had the mecha for a long time. I bet on that. So, great choice. Yeah, mecha's up, so he's going to work on hood uh, and pipe. Sorry. Uh, and, of course, uh, Invoker, after his uh, four staff, we're going to see Hex. So double four staff up, that is going to give them the mobility that I said they're going to need. Um, triple four staff, sorry. Four staff on AA, four staff on the invoker, and four staff on the uh, destroyer. They're going to have so much mobility. Oh, this is a really, really bold move from destroyer. He's going to say, okay, you know what? We have three four staff. We're going to use mobility to keep ourselves uh, alive. And look, here comes Gondar. Got to be fearful because of this track. Um, looks like he is going to go for BKB as expected. And it looks like that is going to force Destroy to TP back. And they are lo actually looking for a team fight. Let's see if that's going to be the case. Um, wards up on both sides here. Both teams just putting up so many wards. This ward can be countered immediately. Oh no, unfortunately Central Ward is going to run out. And uh, uh, Roshan is coming around. That's why both teams is hovering around this uh, Roche area. And that's going to give benefit in terms of a, a big scale Roche fight. It's going to give the benefit to the Scourge team because they're closer to it. They have more tower to TP to. If people need to buy back and TP to it, they can. Great wards being put down by the Crystal Maiden. Looks like they're going to try to engage. And looks like four staff one number one is going to become out. Crystal Maiden going very offensive. And she's going to get completely focused down. Now they're going to focus on the Invoker. Invoker, there's a disrupt. And there's a Fissure Echo Slam. He's cycling immediately in the air. That's actually 
actually pretty good for him. Wait for the cooldown of those spells. Invoker, uh, looks like Force Staff is going to be used defensively or offensively on himself. It looks like he is picked down before he drops any spells. Quite unfortunate. Panda Ultimate is down and they are going to focus him down very easily. Got under very low HP. Do we have a buyback from How's the question? No, Shago Shan, Two Hero Tron turning this team fight around. This team fight is just so messy. And here we go, Ganda trying to do, of course, track movement speed. He is picked up Fissure. Wow, that Shaker is still alive and he's still alive to the end of the team fight. Looks like Tron trying to pick off someone with a power shot. And looks who's going to be in trouble? Looks like DK might be in trouble. They might focus on the Lich because he's an easier target to bring down. There is a Dragon Tail and also a lot of nukes being dropped down on him. Uh, Lich, very, very low. One more hit. It's going to bring him down. No, he's going to try to TP out. One more hit. He's going to get brought down. So Shaker is still alive at this end of team fight he's gonna come right back after surviving with such low hp and they're gonna bring down zoe winman is trying to run out these four staffs are just doing so much right now but i think he's gonna run out he doesn't have a tp scroll he's only got a hundred mana or uh, he's gonna pop his magic wand so he does have a little bit of mana left he's he's waiting for the win run there's a win run right now i don't think they can chase him down they're gonna try with the smoke though Creeps constantly seeing where he is. He's definitely going to go down. There's no way he's going to run out. EMP going to drain the remaining of his mana and it's going to get chased down. I'm not too sure whether I like the decision here for Panda Chase. They spent at least a good 30 seconds to chase the hero down. That 30 seconds could have been Roshan kill. That 30 seconds could have been a tier 2 hero kill or tier 2 tower kill. So even though IG lost Tron right now, I think they're actually pretty happy with that decision. Um, that the Scourge chase. I think Scourge definitely got a little bit too hot headed in that occasion. Um, and, and that was not a good trade at all, in my opinion. Uh, because, well, everyone was dead at that point. That was literally a free tier 2 tower or a free Aegis. Uh, maybe they feel like they could still do it right now, given that the Panda Ultimate is down. Uh, and if that's the case, hey, maybe that they're, they're right. It uh, looks like they're going to go very confidently into the Roshan pit. But here we go. Sentinel coming in again. Gondor in position. Do they have Sentry Wars? Yes, they do. Man, Shansheng just so good in terms of preparing Sentry Ward in every single fight. There's, there has not been any big scale engagement right now in any state of the game where there was not any true sight in the vicinity. And that's kind of the constant vigilance you need to go against this kind of lineup. Another Sentry Ward being dropped down. That's a fake panda, obviously. And uh, a lot of items on the ground. Unfortunately, they are all iron branches. So, Panda Ultimate is down. So, if they really want to force a team fight, they, they do have a couple of seconds to do so. Uh, hopefully, DK. Yeah, DK is not turning to level 16 just yet. So, they do have a little bit of time left. And here we go. Roshan is going to be attempted. And both teams really hovering around the Roche area. Whoever gets the Aegis right now just going to have a huge lead. Unfortunately for how I think he forced half himself in the middle of a team fight in that last engagement and try to get off a really good. Uh, ultimate, uh, but unfortunately he kind of forced that in and got chained to death, and that's the unfortunate part of not having a BKB. Another pair of Central War being dropped down by the Crystal Maiden. The warding is just absolutely insane. Maybe they're waiting for a smoke. Did you have a smoke on the Invoker? Hex is finished. Man, the Invoker is farm. He's gonna go for a Planeswalker Cloak. Maybe gonna go for a Hood himself. A hey, blast being sent to the top lane. And here we go, engagement is going to happen. Looks like Gonda in trouble. Looks like we have four staff up. Was that an offensive four staff or defensive one? Oh my goodness. Look at this ice wall being dropped down right now. Another four staff going to put Yao Bai in a pretty terrible position. He can't go into Ghost Walk anymore because he's tracked. And I think he's going to just face boot out there. No, he is going to be brought down by the Focus Fire. And it looks like that team fight is starting really nicely. And the team fight is not over right now. As we see the uh, Destroyer being picked up in the air. Where's the, shot? Where's the four staff? Where's the four staff? No four staff. And he is focused down the track bonus movement CB is keeping everyone moving but here we go Shaker comes in the team fight doing a lot of AoE damage Panda still not done with this chase yet Crystal Maiden still dropping all, all, all spells looks like DK just doing too much damage and too much tanking IG I cannot believe they're winning these team fights they're out positioning Panda so hard right now because Mu or not Mu how in these last two team fights oh my goodness another Shaco shot and he is going to get brought down Force Staff should be on cooldown fairly soon he can't Force Staff himself out can't will that be enough no it won't be and this team fight just hugely in favor for the one exchange right now in favor of IG. They're going to bring down a tier 2 tower. Are they going to go into the Wushan pit is the question. Or they can swing to get the top tower as well. And it looks like the creep by itself is going to get the top tower. Maybe he's going to go for the tier 2. No, they're going to back off for now. They got a, no man. They got so much. Four hero kills, a two tower kills. And the game is going to swing right back in the favor of IG. This is a really, really close game. I got to say, this really shows the... The more experienced IG team has. Generally, when you have three four staff on your team, and of course a shaker with a blink dagger, and a crystal maiden, which by the way, probably one of the best support hero when it comes to positioning, because she has so much range, you should have the advantage when it comes to positioning. But 
I don't know how IG is doing it. They're isolating hero. I don't know, man. They they're picking up like they they picked off the invoker right in the outside of the game. Maybe I, I've been seeing so many four staff forwards. Is, is this Tron four staffing people forward? I I gotta assume that's the case. Um, yeah, Tron maybe he four staff people forward, or maybe it was Panda forcing staffing themselves forward. In either case, they they were caught out in terrible positions and. Uh, they lo lost those team fights very handily, and looks like Scourge looking for a little bit more as DK level 16, he's level 17 with the BKB. No pipe just yet, but with the BKB up, he is the master of these teams. Who, how are you going to bring down a level 17 DK who has 19 base armor, right? This is not counting Frost armor. Uh, this is not counting Vanguard blocks, and of course magical resistance. How are you going to bring him down? The, the pure damage of the destroyer will not, will not go through BKB. So... I'm really worried about Scourge at this point, and like I said 10 minutes ago, Scourge is playing on a clock, and they might have reached the end of that clock. They are going to get themselves a free Aegis, because DK9 position, DK farming those creeps, and looks like who's going to pick it up? Looks like Destroyer is going to pick up the Aegis. That's a great choice, because he's been dying in the last few engagements, and I think they might be starting to regress, regret the fact that maybe this should have been a uh, BKB instead of a uh, Ultimate Orb, really. I really think BKB is an absolute necessity against this amount of chain stun and this amount of nuke damage. But we'll have to see. Hex, we'll, I mean, Hex, if you Hex someone, you could easily bring him down before he even comes out of the Hex duration. Like, it, it destroys just does so much damage. And Hex does give you 10 strength, so is it the right choice? And so far, it doesn't seem like it, but of course, if you look at the mid lane here, uh, we can see the remnant of uh, the spell being cast on the ground, the plight. Uh, of the of the uh, scourge getting dispelled, the plight of the undead. But uh, anyways, both teams waiting for positioning, and looks like uh, Panda after that lads is gonna go for Ag Scepter, and this is just a luxury on that Panda. Like he doesn't even need it. Of course, having a bigger ultimate is gonna be fairly helpful. But uh, he he's pretty much done. Uh, Lich in this case still working, still working on that Mecha. Oh, he's not working. What is this? There's a mecha already up on Windrunner. Two mecha? Hmm. Now, if this is a pub game, I'll be like, man, what the hell are you getting two mecha for? That's just a waste of gold. But I, I don't think this is a mistake. This might be a very conscious decision. I'm thinking maybe they're expecting one of these heroes will get picked off by the right in the early of the game, right in the outside of the game. So um, that would ensure that you have a mecha. But still, that's that's a big gold inv investment. Um, Mecha and Buckler armor buff no longer stacks together. Uh, if, if it did stack together, I'll be say, okay, well, you know, armor buff stack. Uh, maybe he's going for for a pipe, but DK is a lot closer to the pipe, so I'm I'm just absolutely confused why Lich has the makings of a Mecha part. No, he sold the Zetras. I think yeah, he sold his Zetras and got earned. So maybe it was just an honest mistake uh, by our Lich players. I mean, it makes sense. All right, looks like both teams are still hovering around the map. Let's see how Gondor is doing on his gold. Uh, let's check out how everyone's doing on his gold. Gondor's got uh, a thousand gold in the bank, still missing six hundred or so from his Myrtle Hammer. It's gonna be doing a little bit of farming. Um, DK's got another fifteen hundred in the bank with the DK uh, B, uh, BKB finish. Probably gonna finish pipe now uh, with fifteen hundred. That's the best you could do. And here we go, the engagement is going to be happening fairly soon. It looks like Warwick is going to get dropped. Immediately Lich saw that one. He's like, you know what? Nope. Going to counter that one immediately. And Crystal Maiden feeling a little bit sad. But the power, uh, tower it is critically destroyed by the Panda team. So another small victory for Panda. It looks like they're gonna, they want to push this home. Maybe a little bit of a sense of urgency. Saying that this DK is getting pretty fat now. Got to be a little bit worried about that. So... Hex still not up, and uh, of course with the Aegis on the destroyer, they could be playing a little bit more aggre aggressive with them. Blink Dagger, Islam, and Rygor also has a point booster. One thing I want to point out about these team fight about how Rygor, of course, he drops off a pretty decent uh, Echo Slam in each fight. But more importantly, his the, the fact that he just he just never dies. Have you noticed? Like he just survives with 10 HP, and then he blinks back in with the same, you know, 10 HP, and then just starts going off again with the Enchant Totem and Fissure, which, by the way, has fairly low cooldown. And in each single fight, he's dropping successfully, you know, many, many, many Fissures. And uh, that's not what we see a lot from uh, Shaker plays, because Shaker, normally, he just walks in with that ultimate and just dies afterwards. 
but uh, he's just showing the effectiveness of having a shaker being kept alive for a long time. Uh, he's level 16 right now, so his ultimate is going to pack a punch. Really high levels, for the most part, is actually going to be Destroyer, who's a level 15, because he's been dying at the beginning of every sing all these team fights. And Shaker, who's been surviving to the end of these team fights, picking up level 16 so very quickly. DK farming on the bot lane. Uh, unfortunately, did not get the tower denied. A very uncharacteristic move of Zoe. Getting outlasted by a freaking glaive thrower or meat wagon, meat wagon, and uh, looks like how is gonna says okay we're gonna just TP back up top and keep on farming. Let's see how he's doing on the gold 2400. So missing about a thousand gold uh, for his hex stick. And uh, the question is, will you buy the hex right now, even if you have the gold to do it, or will you save for buyback? Because we're in a very tense moment in the game where both teams has a DPS where after one unsuccessful team fight, you're going to get raxed. So are you going to save for the Hex or are you going to save for the buyback? Both very, very important in this stage of the game. And uh, we have to see. Uh, I, I'm going to keep the game on Scourge Vision for now. Kind of show what they see. Uh, because I'm, ex I'm definitely expecting a smoke gang coming in right now. It looks like the engagement is going to be happening right now. Shanshaw is going to get picked off. Shaco shot. Not going to hit. Maybe I'll go into... Uh, no, no. EMP tornado draining a good deal of DK's mana. But there's... Uh, oh, four staff. Yeah. Chain Frost is used for... No, there's a hex on the panda. But can they bring him down? Shaco shot on two. Unfortunately. And looks like that chain frost... Or that, not the chain frost. The frost epicenter from Zoe. It's going to do it. That's a double kill. And do they have buybacks? The question. I don't think they do. Invoker. No, he bought back. And looks like AA bought back as well. So, wow. They were prepared. They were prepared. Both teams, uh, both uh, heroes trying to save each other. And Chuan says, okay, we'll get both of you guys. No problem there. And guess what? They did it without using their Panda Ultimate. So, of course, with the DA form up for a bit, they could at least contest for this top tower. Of course, with the buybacks. And, of course, they baited out Chain Frost. Uh, Scourge feeling that they're in a you know, pretty good position as well. They do still have buyback and Aegis on the Destroyer. He has a gem hold up as well, and they're going to chase away the Sentinel squad. But Sentinel, uh, two hero kills, forced two buybacks on those two same heroes. A very good victory for them. And again, they did not use a Panda Ultimate. Pa uh, DK Ultimate is fairly short on the cooldown, so they can uh, get it back fairly quickly. He's going to go for AC, so it's very, very tank. BKB is up on the Gondar. Lich, very good supportive item. Of course, looks like Windrunner. Is he going for BKB as well? It won't surprise me at all if he is. I don't think she's going for anything for like a Sange or an Axe Stick or anything of that sort. Yeah, she must be going for BKB. Uh, don't underestimate the damage output of a Windrunner. And Windrunner has the potential to be as annoying as a Shaker in the team fight, assuming she survives at the end, right? Shackle shots, power shots, very low cooldown. And she does have pretty good damage, to be completely honest here. So uh, this, this decision to get a BKB on, on uh, the Windrunner, not surprising at all. And uh, like I said, BKB would just own this squad really hard. Where is the damage going to come from after they pop the BKB, after they get magical immunity? Destroy is not going to do too much anymore. Um, Invoker, I mean, I guess he's okay still. I mean, he right clicks pretty hard, but you want to spell casting. AA is not going to do anything at all. Shaker, by the way, he can't do anything against BKB units. And normally, I, I, I really hate the fact that it's like, oh man, look, BKB counters Destroyer. I hate people when they say that because... That's definitely not the case. Like, sure, your carry might be KB, but his Sanity Eclipse will still hurt the rest of your team. Uh, as a big AoE ultimate, he still could orb a walk, you know, your supports and everything. But as soon as you have four guys that, that is immune to magic, then Destroyer starts to become useless against BKB. Because, well, Panda doesn't care. Like, he's magically immune with his ultimate. And, and of course, everyone except Lich is magically immune as well. And at that point, then you can safely say, okay... Destroyer is useless against BKB heroes, but you know, 4k BKB or 3 BKB and a Panda Ultimate, that's huge investment uh, just to stop a single hero. So, yes, it is true the fact that BKB does hurt Destroyer quite a bit, but uh, not as much as you think so, because still, um, against one BKB, he's he's absolutely fine. Looks like we're going to have a huge smoke gank engagement, and gotta be careful of that Shackle shot. Looks like he is going to fight. There's a track. 
Four staff on the DK. Frost epicenter is being dropped out. And look, no! He's, oh, there's a nice uh, self disrupt, so he should be okay for now. There's a blink in. He does have the Aegis. It's gonna force staff down the hill. That's gonna leave AA in a terrible position. He did save himself with the Aegis, though. And this team fight not going well, because look, they are gonna just chase people down. Invoke or Shackle shot. And he's gonna be done. Looks like Scourge choosing to fight this team fight. There's a, uh, oh, oh, he's disrupted. Can he come back alive? But no, he's dropped down immediately. There's a Panda Ultimate used just at the last second. They are gonna bring down Destroy. He does have the Aegis. I mean, it's going to be surrounded and brought down again. It looks like the Shaker are going to get brought down as well because you're not going to run. It's a 5 for nothing team fight in favor of IG again. IG out positioning the team that has three four staffs, a Blink Dagger on the Shaker, and a Crystal Maiden simply because they have more experience and simply because they have that Gondar tracking like crazy. They are just chasing everyone down. The BKB being very helpful. Generally, when you run heading into a... A, uh, a lineup like this the enemy team will say okay well we'll just blink the hell out of you and blink echo slam will force staff engage with our big aoe ultimates big aoe spells on the invoker will engage you no problem but you can't engage them if they're magically immune and uh, it seems like ig has figured that out we'll just use our mobility through gondar we'll use use our tanking power through our bkb and just take you head on no big deal and it seems like Panda is in huge trouble because they're losing yet another team fight. They have not won a team fight ever since that uh, Roshan engagement, which has been a long while from now. And uh, we're in a stage of the game where it might be more and more difficult for the Panda team to come back because the team is just not built around to do that. Uh, Crystal Maiden is going to be an afterthought in this case, and these guys just getting too much isolated. I feel like they need BKB themselves. Is the Hex finished? Hex is finished, but... I feel like if Invoker had a BKB, and then also maybe if Destroy had a BKB, they would be a lot better. But even so, even if you buy the BKB now, DK is getting it to a point where his DPS output is just absolutely insane. And uh, Crystal Maiden, who finds that Hastrin. Again, still, look at Crystal Maiden though, just keeping all those wards up. Unfortunately, Gem is up on, on the Lich. The fact that they dropped the Gem, uh, a little bit unfortunate. A very tense moment on both teams. And that axe stick is up. One thing I'm interested to see is whether these pro players are actually would rebuy the Django recipe. I feel like it's always, I feel like chipped, you know. Uh, when you use all your Django charges and you sell the Django, you get zero gold back. But then you don't want to keep, you don't want to keep the Django because it only gives you like 5% movement speed bonus and, and attack speed bonus. So it's, it's not a, a good item to keep in your inventory slot because, you know, 5%, you'd rather get a new item. But I feel gypped, you know, and there's a bracer in there, there's a, there's a, uh, real, real magi in there, and I'm selling it for zero gold? I think that's, that's messed up. But then I, I don't want to buy another Django charge recipe, you know? That's, that's the dilemma I always go into. Here we go, Shaker might be initiating, no, he's just walking in there. Just, you know, feeling what's up. Uh, they do have the very, very strong team fight potential. Shaker could blink in with the Echo Slam, A Blast could follow up immediately. But, let me tell you this, you could blink in with Echo Slam. And drop off your Echo Slam, but Shaker's casting point is so slow that you will not get off the second stun before the enemy team pops a BKB. So, you cannot blink in with the Echo Slam and just try to hope, hopefully you wombo combo the entire team. Because they will pop off their, uh, their, uh, what do you call it, their BKB for sure. So... That's why he's not jumping in, even though they were fairly clumped in that last engagement. Because he would have dropped the Echo Slam and he would have just died. And uh, they, these track bonus, there's nothing you could do about it. They're just so damn annoying. Of course, they cannot really rely on wards for sight anymore. They being the Scourge team because, well, there's a gem on the Lich. And looks like it is Sentinel going to be claiming the Roshan uh, Vantage. It looks like DK again going for the Maelstrom. Getting that DPS output, of course, having that, uh, or not Maelstrom, Mjolnir, having that static charge on him as well is going to give him a lot of a DPS output. You don't really want to attack him, but you have to because he's tank, he's throwing up Frost Epicenters, and also he is, uh, well, procking Lightning. It looks like Mu, or how is going to be in trouble. He does have one Force app on him, maybe his teammate's going to Force app him out as well. Got to be fairly careful of Tron at this point. Man, a two-man Shackle shot in this game might as well just be a, a five-man Echo Slam. It's, it's just that game-changing. And guess what? You could keep trying, because Shackle Shot costs, what, 100 mana? And has a very low cooldown? You could keep doing it. No big deal.
Looks like DK is going to be the souling the Roche. Uh, he could drop the magic wand. Both teams very tense. The blink dagger initiation. Both team has it. Blink on Panda. Blink on Shaker. And uh, there's a tornado down. That's 25 seconds that you could do something about it. Crystal made it. Might drop her ultimate. Yeah, she is gonna take the farm. But no, she's gonna get initiated. It's gonna cancel ultimate. Trying to run out. And there's a BKB being used. And they're gonna focus on the CM. I think they're fine. But not when you get two men shackled like this. Panda jumps in with the ultimate four staff out. There's a track double four staff out. But they're gonna chase them down. How's gonna go down? Crystal maidens go down. Look at the gold popping up with all those track bonus. They're gonna bring down the Roshan. They they could go for racks if they want to, or they could turn back for the ages. Whatever they want right now, IG's gonna get this. And looks like IG, this is their game to t uh, to win. Courier gonna get killed. The Cyclone's gonna get dropped on the uh, Shaker. I don't think they're gonna kill him. Yeah, they're gonna turn back for the ages for now. And I think they're gonna just walk into mid and take the take the. And these AI, AI splats are pretty weak though. Who's gonna pick up the Aegis? Who's gonna pick up Cheese? Cheese on the DK. I like that choice a lot. Aegis on Gondor. And the reason I like the Cheese on the DK is because well. When you die with your DK form with Aegis, you don't respawn with a DK form. So uh, if you want to keep on attacking in your you know massive Frost Epicenter attack form, uh, you you rather have cheese. So great job for picking cheese up. And uh, let's see if they're gonna wait for the DK. They, let's see if they're gonna wait for all their ultimates on cooldown, or they're gonna just you know go at it. DK picks up a vid booster and a reaver. He is gonna be. So hard to bring down. I mean, he's already hard to bring down, but that's just gonna bring him to a whole nother level. Of course, the rest of the uh, Sentinel squad, extremely rich BKB is finished on the win render. Yep. These team fights are just not even fair. I feel like just everyone popped their BKB, they charge in, and uh, you can't run. Like I said, this is a this is a version that prevents running. Frost attacks, blink panda slow, track shackle shots from Tron. Why don't people ban a Windrunner against Tron? I've been asking that question. Someone tell me that. Why don't people ban Windrunner against Tron? Well, I'll tell you why. If you ban Windrunner against IG, they're like, oh yeah, we'll just beat you with Lycan. Oh yeah, we'll just beat you with CK. You know? No problem. You could ban Windrunner. And uh, these these are the, the type of players that just take heroes that... Take heroes to another level and just make teams respect ban you for it. You know, IG has Gondar. IG has Windrunner that really deserves a ban, but you don't really want to ban those heroes because they're Gondar and Windrunner. Uh, Nirvana China has, like, you know, Exus Tinker, Exus Storm, sometimes Sniper. You don't want to ban those heroes. Uh, but but they, they're they picked and they win games. It's just, you know, all these professional teams have these signature heroes, signature players. And uh, they, they, they'll wreck you. I mean, normally, if you look at this item build, like what, a, a jangle into treads into a BKB and then an SMY, if you build that in pub, some some you know, some public player that believes that he knows Dota very well, be like, yeah, oh, whatever, what what is this new Gondor build? But hey, in the highest stage of games being played like this, so uh, Dota is not a one-dimensional game, so your item sets don't have to be one-dimensional either. EMP Tornado trying to defend. Uh, EMP Tornado has lost a lot of his uh, luster at this point of the game. Having to deal with high mana pool and all these heroes. Arcane boots up on Windrunner, so they don't really care about that anymore. And uh, it is only a matter of time. Track is going to provide a bonus a movement speed. And of course, th the bonus gold if they do get the kill. DK don't, doesn't even care at this point. Oh, Shaker gets 4 staff in. There's a Fissure. But they can't bring him. Look at him. Doesn't even care. But they what are they doing a very good job is they're waiting out the duration of the DK form. So if they could wait out completely, at the very least, they don't have to deal with that frost attack. Maybe they're going to smoke up right here and go for another time. No, they're going to turn back. So, yep. Scourge, this successfully defend this. DK form is going to be out, but not when the Shaker gets caught like this. They're going to initiate. I'm not too sure about this. Shackle shot on two hero as you expect. There's a Deathling Blast. Can they bring off the Gonda? Gonda very low. He is going to shatter, but he has Asia. So no big deal. Crystal Maiden comes in right now. EMP Tornado gets dropped off. DK doesn't care. Panda pops his ultimate. Doesn't care as well. Crystal Maiden's going to get dropped down for sure. She's very slow, and she's going to get... Yeah, there's a Janata hit. She's slow. She's done. And now the uh, Ancient Apparition... Gonna get focused down as well, and that's the game. Invoker is gonna be soon to follow. Look at BKB winner. Have you seen one winner this big? I haven't. 
But uh, and now how not really in the team fight in the beginning, but uh, it's gonna get brought down. And uh, GG should be called very soon now. That's the game to be honest. Triple kill on Ferrari the Panda. GG's gonna be called. Well played IG takes game one of this best of three series. I think I'm gonna cast game two, seeing how good uh, this game one was. So do you look forward to that? But before I go, I'm not too sure why the hell Panda that initiated that team fight. Maybe they're saying, okay, DK form is down, so let's go. Let's let's make this happen. This is our best chance to to do anything about it. But they focus every single spell on the heroes that had Aegis and a cheese. So I, I like their the train of thought, but was it the correct target to go on? Uh, but regardless, regardless, I felt like they were so behind it didn't matter anyways. Uh, so it was regardless a very good attempt uh, by by our panda friends. Uh, so unfortunately, panda drops game number one, but we still have game number two and three to go. Uh, if there's game number two and three, if there's no game number three, there's definitely going to be game number two, which I'm going to bring you that game. So hopefully you guys enjoy this rather long but a fairly action-packed game. I have to say, really, really good show of uh, good positioning by panda, and of course how to gank three three four staffs. Uh, Panda a little bit disappointing with their positioning, but uh, still nicely played. So, hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and uh, until next time, as always, this is Luminous, signing off. See you guys.